Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, well, I guess one, one thing I've been uh, wrestling with a lot lately is how do you like how do you acknowledge that uh, how do you how do you acknowledge it yourself and all the people that or most of the people that you love that are really close to you contribute to uh, really messed up systems, right? So, and then, so for example, my dad is really, really racist. And I'm not, I don't just mean in like, uh, oh, he sometimes uses like incorrect terminology or something. My dad's someone who like will not watch a movie if it depicts uh, a relationship between like a black man and a white woman, right? Like specifically, it has to be a black man and a white woman. If if the genders are switched, she doesn't care. But uh, and he's still like he'll just leave the room if he sees that, right? So it's interesting because and he's he went to a bunch of. Um, it, hold on, let me. Uh, is it possible? I, I I'm sure you know know your dad uh, and why what causes his belief. But it's interesting that you say. If it's, it, he only has a problem if it's a black man and a white woman, but if it's a white man and a black woman, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. Yeah. So, it, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is there something else besides racism going on there? Well, I think there's a, I think there's a degree of like, uh, there's probably a degree of sexism too, because I think it, I think a lot of it boils down to like, there is kind of a history of like white sexual insecurity with regards to, oh, like, the the black man coming and taking our women, right? And, like, the idea of, oh, I as a white man, and this is, this is a messed up idea, I'm not saying this, but this is the idea, I think, is, like, oh, I as a white man am entitled to white women, you know? Like, that's kind of my right. So, it's a messed up thing. It's really messed up. But I think that is the... Uh, that is kind of the messed up reasoning behind it, you know? Um, but it's just interesting. And then he's also... And Wait, then, but I, I, I would like to try to uh, hone in on a, on a belief. Oh, for sure. And yeah. I, I kind of, I want to let you kind of talk it out. Um, but at this, like, one of the things, I think the thing that you kind of started off with was the um, sort of conundrum of having people who you love and care about yeah. who you feel are contributing to something that you don't yeah to systems that you don't like for sure yeah um and so um i, I like yeah, i want i would like to try to uh like stay on like Focus that's an interesting that. yeah. topic uh yeah. but yeah without getting too far down the the line of like your dad's racism you know for but, sure for sure so then that that's what i would that's something I wrestle with a lot in terms of how do you show. So if someone just knew that about my dad, I know a lot of my friends would just dismiss my dad as like a piece of shit full stop. Right. And, but I know that my dad has a lot of really beautiful, great qualities as well. Right. Mm -hmm. And so then it's wrestling with how do you navigate uh, the dynamics of being in relationships with people that are really close to you, mm -hmm. almost inevitably so. Like, I'm not going to cut off my relationship with my dad, right? How do you navigate that and and show try to show love and understanding and uh, assume good intentions, but at the same time recognize that, like, I mean, that, one, this is super messed up, and two, like not act as if you're okay with those things that he believes, you know? Mm -hmm. And to a lesser extent, you know, that's a dynamic that I have with a fair amount of people. My dad's probably the biggest one. So that's just something I think is interesting because it's like when you, if you're just online and you're kind of in your own echo chamber, I think it's really easy to just focus on, on one thing about a group of people that you disagree with and then and do you think that uh, that phenomenon that you just described about the echo chambers, like, contributes, you know, you mentioned that um, you, like, your friends and stuff, they knew that, that you know, that one fact about your dad would d dismiss him altogether. Yeah. Do you think that that, um, 
that the that the social media phenomenon has led to or exacerbated that tendency in like the modern era. Yeah, well, for sure. Cause I, I think that with social media and with uh, YouTube, you can kind of tailor the you can tailor the environment through which you perceive and are presented with information in such a way as that it only reinforces what you already think mm -hmm. and only distances yourself from people that might not think those exact things. And then if you're 100% in that uh, echo chamber, then I think it's really easy to uh, just kind of dismiss anyone outside of it as a bad person without really interacting with them a lot. Do you think that uh, those people, the, those friends, if their dad or mom were super racist, that they would dismiss them? Uh, or do you think they would behave in a similar way to you? I don't think they would. I think they'd probably behave in a similar way to me because I think that when you're confronted with someone you love and who's someone who's actively in your life, but who has these really negative beliefs, it kind of forces you to be like, take a more nuanced look at kind of the complexities of a person, you know? Yeah. So does that sort of speak to like an erosion of uh, an ability to like humanize people outside of uh, your immediate um, family uh, I or, think, or a certain uh, close circle any, at any rate? Yeah, for sure. I think that there is an erosion of that. And I think that the erosion of that is because there's, well, humanization of people comes from when you interact with them, right? Because then you can't stereotype them as much if right. you're actually talking to them. But if you're never talking to people uh, outside of the that online echo chamber, then it's going to be really easy to right. not humanize them. And so, yeah, I think that were my friends to have a similar situation, they would probably be more nuanced in how they think about it. And conversely, I'd probably be less nuanced if I didn't have this situation. Right, you know, right, so. right. So what, like, you used your dad as an example. Maybe there are some other people who are uh, maybe a little less severe. But um, in what way are they, like you mentioned, they're contributing to systems. Like, in what way are, like, if you want to use your dad as an example, like, he is he... Uh, contributing to any system yeah so i would say that uh well i'm mostly going to talk about like the race right or the system of like systemic racism and stuff so if so basically my dad totally sees himself as like a morally upstanding guy and also uh actively went uh went with a gun to protest against uh, BLM protests when all the George Floyd protests are going on, right? So if you think that, oh, there are like structural problems in our criminal justice system that cause some people to be treated differently than others, and that uh, discrepancy falls along racial lines, right? And I think that, I think that especially in terms of like uh, how drug users are treated and stuff. Uh, if you think that, then either not supporting and just turning a blind eye, not supporting BLM movements and turning a blind eye to that, or even actively opposing them, you are very much so defending that system that treats people differently, right? So that's what I would say he's contributing to a messed up system, even if on an, in a lot of ways and on a lot of individual ways i still love him and i think he's a good guy in a lot of ways but that's kind of how i would define that you know in what ways do you think he's a good guy oh well he's like uh well he's a he's a ridiculously hard worker and he he's someone who he'll make a lot of he'll he has a lot of like hate and animosity towards groups of people like specifically black men but if there was an individual black guy on the side of the road like injured and needing help he would 100 percent go help him like when he's actually interacting with people face to face he shows a lot of compassion and stuff but then when he's reading about groups in that disconnected way he 
he has a lot of anger, you know? Hmm. So it's that type of thing, probably. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Um, like, getting back to the his reaction to, uh, like, BLM or something. Yeah. Is it, uh, I feel like uh, it, with a lot of subjects nowadays, um, and BLM is a really good example of this, there is a real discrepancy between what people think that is about. Yeah. Right? Like, some people think that it's a continuation of the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. um, some people think it's, like, a revolutionary Marxist organization that wants yeah. to tear down America. Yeah, for sure. Right? And so, and there's a wide range. And so, maybe his reaction to that and to groups in general is a is because he is interpreting those things as something different than perhaps you are. Yeah, for sure. I know that that is the case to an extent, because I know that if you were to ask him about, I mean, I know because I have asked him about it, but if you were to ask him about uh, what does Black Lives Matter, what does that movement mean, or what is it standing for, he would say it's standing for, like, what it really means is only Black Lives Matter, right? Why would you have a phrase like Black Lives Matter well, the implication of that, he would argue, is other lives, specifically white lives, don't matter, right? And I know that essentially everyone, basically everyone who considers themselves a part of that movement would argue that it's not only Black Lives Matter, it's Black Lives Matter too, but they're not being treated as if they matter. You know, like we need to focus in on the, it's, it's like saying, oh, you know, breast cancer is bad isn't like saying, all cancer isn't bad. It's just right now we're focusing on a specific right one. You know? Right. So yeah, I mean, I think um, you know, with that example, like breast cancer, like a lot of like there are people who uh, feel like the focus on uh, breast cancer is at the expense of like uh, research on prostate cancer. Yeah. You know, they see it as this sort of uh, 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 gender bias kind of thing happening, and then like. Um, you know, I think maybe perhaps someone like your father might say, like, he might it might fuel his belief that it's like only Black Lives Matter because when people say things like All Lives Matter, they get called a racist, mm -hmm. and uh, you know. Yeah, no, exactly. He would say that it's like, how can, how possibly can you be called a racist or a bad guy for saying All Lives Matter, but if you say just one type of life matters that's considered a totally good thing. Now, like I said, I think that's a really flawed understanding, but that's definitely how he would see it. Yeah, for sure. A flawed understanding. I think that's yeah. a flawed understanding. Yeah. yeah. I that's mean, so like in terms of like uh, humanizing uh, the other, mm -hmm. like uh, it seems like being having more careful un understanding and, and exploring why, like how people define a thing like Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. is important in like not judging too quickly maybe yeah and it, well i would also just say that I, th I think there's a lot of people that say things like all lives matter and who interpret black lives matter in a really poor way that are are still good people and shouldn't be dismissed but they're just pretty ignorant like they haven't they don't have a good understanding of these issues on like a macro structural level right and I, i'm obviously not a professional or expert either but like so yeah i just think it's important to even if those people are wrong and i think they are wrong to not be like oh they're all just horrible people and we should treat them as horrible people you know right so yeah and it's and it's like if you do you're obviously not going to change anyone's mind that disagrees with you if you if you you know just treat people that disagree with you as horrible you're not going to change right, your mind right. and shouldn't that be the goal of any conversation you know is to change minds right or at least plant you know seeds for that you know and yeah, and, sure. and be able to dialogue so where would you say you are um with regard to your first statement about um reconciling the um uh, I, the ability to uh, remain in relationships uh, with people, whether they're like close to you or not, um, who you feel may be engaged in, um, you know, propping up a, a system that you don't support. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tricky. How I kind of try to look at it is like, I think that. 
I think it's really easy for humans to, on the individual level, uh, when they directly interact with people, to show a lot of empathy, but to be kind of blind to more subtle ways in which they contribute to mm. systems that hurt a bunch of people. Mm. And I think that, to an extent, that probably, I think to a lesser, lesser extent, but definitely to some extent, I'd say I probably fall in that category as well. I think almost everyone to some degree falls within that. Right. I think that's something where you just have to be like, this is a kind of unfortunate aspect of human nature. This is something that we should try to combat and change. But so could I uh, sum that up kind of in a cliche, like oh, uh, sure. if Go you, you know, don't throw stones if you live in a glass house kind of thing. Like, yeah. And I like you, like, like we all live in this world and we all, uh, you know, prop up systems to a certain degree or yeah. another by participating. So yeah. maybe n don't be so judgmental. Yeah. And, and like I said, I think that the degree of which you did to which you do that varies a lot. Sure. But I just think it's a thing where you attacking the individual, I don't think really uh, leads to anything good. I think it's one of those things where it's like you should show a lot of empathy to people, even if you show a lot of anger to the systems they're participating in. You know, I kind of try to look at it like that. That uh, sounds kind of like your dad. Uh, I guess kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... I, I get what you're saying because I just said that my dad shows a lot of, uh, uh, you know, he would help someone on the help a black guy on the side of the street if he was hurting. Um, but I think the difference is that if my my dad looks at a group of people and has a lot of and considers problems within these groups of people to be the result of individual moral failings, right? So like he would look at black people as a whole and say, oh, there's a lot of individual moral failings on behalf of each of them, right? Or on behalf of most of them. Whereas I would try to look at a group that I don't agree with, you know, and say, oh, it's not their perceived failings aren't a result of them on an individual level being bad people. It's a result of just kind of the environment they find themselves in, you know, and we should still try to show a lot of, you know, empathy for that. Right. So, yeah, I think there's similarities, but I, I do think that our perspectives in that sense aren't, are definitely not a hundred percent the sure. same, you know? Sure. So, yeah. All right. Um, it, 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 do you have a, a, a belief in, uh, like, uh, what we, what we as a society or individuals might do in order to um, be more like empathetic and less like otherizing to uh, people who we may initially perceive as being, um, you know, on the wrong side of an issue or what have you. Uh, yeah, I would say, I'd say a couple of things. I'd say try to try to have actual like one-on-one -on -one conversations with people you disagree with and uh, do your best to, you know, show show love while you're doing that. Uh, this can be kind of funny. I would, I would say uh, I think everyone should have at least once, like, psychedelic experience in their lives because I think that helps a lot if you, you know, just uh, have, like, you know, drop acid once or something. I think that really helps you get a better perspective on this kind of stuff. So I'd recommend that. Uh, and you, I, I, not to go on a totally different tangent, but um, so a, a lot of times I hear people talk about, uh, you know, MDMA and, and psychedelics and stuff as sort of uh, giving them a, a real sense of like oneness. Right. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and I think that's kind of what you're alluding to, where question, like yeah. you you feel like this, this separate the separations between entities going down. Right. Mm -hmm. And 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 then I also hear. Um, religious people uh, who have not taken, you know, psychedelics talk about that same sort of phenomenon, like their, um, their religious faith, giving them a, you know, breaking down barriers in terms of, uh, um, you know, being more forgiving, more humble, and, 
uh, less, like less, erecting fewer walls between themselves and other people. Mm -hmm. um, For sure, yeah. I think that's. I think that's interesting. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's sort of De a different tangent. But. Definitely, <laughs> for sure. Definitely. I mean, I'm personally not religious to the extent that pe the people who are religious, you know, they're to the extent that their faith allows them to show greater compassion and understanding to other people and feel that sense of oneness. I think that's a totally beautiful thing. Yeah, it's certainly not uh, every it's every not right? yeah sure yeah so but to the extent that that works for you on an individual level I, I think that's great yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah you you're I'm sorry to go down that but you were saying uh, one thing might be uh, everybody doing some having a psychedelic experience yeah I think that and like I said I think just talking to people that right. that don't agree with you and talking to people that you might otherwise dismiss as like bad people mm. trying trying to talk to them i think that's really important mm. and now would that uh be like would, would do you have a cutoff there like are there certain people that are outside of uh, the bounds there there are people that i would even after talking to them and trying to understand them just be like yeah this person is just a bad person like mm. there's definitely a cutoff for that but i don't think there's a cutoff in terms of some a group of people that I wouldn't talk to. Like I think I would talk to basically everyone, even if for some people after that I might conclude, yeah, these these guys are just, you know, there's really no hope for these guys. Have you have you ever heard of Daryl Davis? I have not. You should check him out. Daryl uh, Davis. Okay. Daryl Davis, yeah. Interesting guy. All right, I'll check him out for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, he might be someone uh, after you check him out, you might pass him along to your dad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, All right, well sure. yeah. Uh, I like to keep them around, you know, under 10 minutes and we're at 20, so. <laughs> oh, my bad. No, no, it's totally fine. Interesting conversation, Gabe. Thank you.